Hi guys, this is a video to show my changes to the DDJ FZ mapping made by Yaya. This is one of the most uh, popular mappings in the JTEC tools uh, for Tractor. It has 5,000 downloads in maps.djtechtools.com. And this is a modification to this mapping that extends this mapping. But in this video, I will also show the, the most advanced features of the Jaja mapping. So thanks, Jaja, for your fantastic work. Uh, the, the mapping, the changes I made is all about effects. So besides the jog wheel effects and pad effects that the mapping already had, now it has macro effects. Macro effects are just like the, color, uh, the Pioneer color effects that have a midpoint in the middle, uh, but made by uh, native instruments, by tractor, and they are the ones that have the small M at the, at the name of the effect. They are here at the end of the list. So let's, uh, let's get started and let me show you the, the, the changes I made. Besides the, the, the macro effects, it also has fixes to some uh, behaviors that I prefer. I'll also show that on the video. Get some music. The, the typical functions are just like the original mapping. Nothing special here. Hot cues. Elite hot cue. Nothing special here. <clears throat> Let's get a loop so that I can show you with a loop how the effects sound like. The, these two arrows are a, a shortcut to the macro effects. This is new. And this is a shortcut to the jog wheel effects. Let's start with the macro effects. This, four, this row of four is the macro effects. You select, just like Pioneer, the color effect. And then you control here. This is wormhole. You control just like the filter. This is polar wing. The next one is flight test. Really convenient, right in the center of the mixer, just like the color effects. And the last one is laser slicer. To turn on and turn off, you either go to the center or click on it effect on the button itself. Note that you can use both macro effects and color effects from Pioneer at the same time. So if you turn on, for example, filter without the macro effects, it is the usual. And now with laser slicer. If you want this one, Just macro effect, turn it off here. The next row is the most useful, in my opinion, uh, effects of the typical DGM 9900 mixer from Pioneer, which is um, delay, flanger, and reverb. Let me show you. You start delay, and it starts off, and then you control it here, just like the Pioneer mixes. When you do it like this, it has a tail. Also like this. Okay. The next one is flanger. Next 
Next one is reverb. Now, the, the page of macro effects, just like the original mapping, has sub pages. You access them pressing shift, change colors, and then you have three pages. So if we go to page two, now all of them are all the macro effects. One hole, laser slicer, ground phase, basomatic, Polar Wind, Event Horizon, Zerp. On page 3, you have the remaining ones. Flight Test, Stretch. Two stretches, the fastest and slow, Dark Matter. Wormhole, so this goes to the whole list of macro effects here, and the most useful, in my opinion, I put it here on the first page. And uh, together with delay, flanger, reverb. Okay. Next topic is the jog wheel effects that was already on the Jaja mapping. I made only a, sm a small modification to, to close the effect. I'll, I'll show you. This uses the this is three effects at the same time, constructed in a really smart way. So you use the jog wheel to activate it. So it's a bit mesher, a filter in the middle and a reverb. I really look like number two and number four. all the time but you have seven it has noise Navigator. To use this one, my recommendation is to start, touch it, and then move slowly. Because if you move too, too fast, you can just go back to where the effect sounds better. And when I used to do it, Cool. So the change I made here to the jog wheel effects is quite small. It's when you press hot Q, it stops doing this and goes into scratch mode. So when you start the jog wheel, it, it makes the, the, this light uh, go around. If you go to the macro effects, still on. And I do the other one. Or the echo, and when you press off Q, it stops so that you don't have to remember is it on or off. Next topic is the pad effects. This is uh, uh, just like this is a roll. Using a loop. Flip mode. If you press shift roll, then you have the P 
pad effects just like the original mapping and three pages of effects change page, third page, note that the buttons change color Next topic, the slicer, still there, exactly the same. Sampler is the same. Uh, the next change I made is I added, I added a second shift button to aid me in beat jump and in other functions that I'll show you in a moment. So there is two shift buttons in this mapping. The normal one, Shift is the one that sets and deletes hot cues. I put it here, delete, nothing special. The other shift, bu shift uh, button is the deck button itself. That's another shift button. Why is this useful? Let's start here. When you press 2, you change the decks. This is to control now deck 4. Deck 2, Deck 4, but when you press it, it takes as a shift function to do other functions. For example, this is zoom. When you press it, it goes to the default zoom level. Really convenient. On the loops, you, you use the buttons to select the size. Nothing special here. And another change I made is you always, when you press auto loop, it's always four. Because that's by far the best way to avoid mistakes, to avoid the situation where you, by some reason you had uh, the loop in one half, for example, and then it sounds like this. When what you wanted is typically a four bit loop. So it always goes to 4, and once you have 4, if you want more, for example 16, you just adjust on the fly. This really, in my experience, avoids a lot of mistakes, and when you press, this is for loop control, and for beat jump and moving the loop, I use the second, the second shift, let me show you how this works. Let's start with beat jump. So, track is playing, no loop. You select the size. You select the size of the loop, but you will not start the loop, you'll move to the, to the track. You press the second shift, which is, in this case, number two. And now, I'm moving. Note that I'm moving beat jump is loop. So I'm moving in eight bar, eight bits increments. Let's move 32, for example. So I use beat jump a lot, especially in these types of music that have long breakdowns. And then really quickly, it's like doing a radio version on the fly. Because as long as you respect the melody, like this, it's barely noticeable, and you really quickly go back to the beat, like this. If you move too fast, too far, so let's go back to the example. The melody repeats at every eight, every, every four, but let's move that, let's imagine that I move too much. Now you notice, you just really quickly go back, like I'm doing here. So you preview, oh, too much, go back. And then you adjust to the right value, which is eight in this, exa in this example, and move. 
Now, you can move for any value that you want. In this example, let's imagine that I have a loop. Let's go back to the beginning. I have a 4-bit loop. And let's imagine that I want to move uh, for 1-bit. Uh, this happens to me a lot. Imagine that I enable the loop on the wrong place. For example, here. Let's imagine that I do the loop here and it's just before the beat and I wanted it next to it so that it releases. Using shift, you control the movement. So the, beat, the loop is four, but now I'm changing the, the, the movement size. And then I activate it with the second shift. Now I'm going to correct the loop for one, like this. When I change the loop size, it goes immediately to loop. And when you press shift auto loop, it automatically moves to one, which is exactly for the situation when you want to move just one. So this is not like record box, for example, where if you have a loop of four, you can only move in increments of four, the loop itself. Here, really convenient, you can move any number like this. Let's imagine that I'm going to move the loop 16 bits, which is this green. Okay. Uh, what more? Here, you have a search bar which is disabled to avoid mistakes when you when you are pressing these buttons. With shift, you can move. Needle drop. Really convenient. And uh, the last change is when you have there's something here on the other deck. is I made a change to the sync button. Typically the sync button is uh, press and double press, toggle, the toggle of, uh, behavior where you press twice to disable. Not here. The sync button here is just like the, the Q button. The Q button, as you know, is you press to enable, press it again to uh, to set it again and then you press shift you delete it now the same story for the sync button so sync when you press sync it enables and when you press it again it, it, it enables it again why is this useful because when if you adjust by hand note that I'm using a tempo sync not beat sync in the in the options you adjust it and this makes a phase because imagine that the bit grid was not set correctly and when you press sync it go it always turns it on and sets it to zero the phase so when you want sync off is shift sync just like shift.q so sync on do it again turn it down Sync on, let's make here a phase, sync it again, turn it off. For master is the second shift. You press second shift sync, which is this guy here, and now this guy is a master. And um, yeah, I think uh, this is it. Uh, another change. Final, final change was the, this button here was a direct change to key. It can be used to some cool effects, but in practice, uh, this resulted a lot of times in this situation because of the limitations of the of tractor and the mapping. Too complex, so I just disable this 
is button completely so that you don't never change your key when you don't want. I hope that you enjoyed. Any questions, just uh, just shoot the tell in the DJ Tech Tools. And uh, any bug, bug, bug reports are very welcome. See you later. <laughs>